So we will publish this interview a little bit later, but it's been almost two years since full-scale invasion. Because yes, we know that the war started 10 years ago in 2014, but it's almost two years since the full-scale invasion when many cities were occupied and then deoccupied. We've seen many victories, small and big. We've seen how Kyiv region was immediately liberated Yes, by our heroic defenders who fight with immense bravery, but also we believe it happened due to God's intervention. But how would you encourage people to continue fighting both spiritually and physically defending the nation who don't really know when the war will finish? How would you encourage them and address them in this difficult, maybe one of the most difficult situations in Ukraine historically, but at the same time we all know that God will intervene and will give us the victory. Well, I want to encourage you in knowing that we are absolutely convinced that you are fighting for right, not wrong. Uh, the enemy who has attacked you did so wrongly. They had no reason to attack you. Um, one has to, well, we do, we question what was in the mind of Putin when even in 2014 he launched the attack. But having failed to achieve the victory in 2014. Yes, the parade in Kyiv never happened. No, no. Uh, and it does make me, well, we all question why um, Putin made another decision to increase his forces and, and move the attack to go to Kiev and take, because the first one was obviously in uh, Donetsk and uh, Lugansk, but to then launch an attack from Belarus in a direct attack on Kiev, it's, it's difficult to understand. And I'm reminded very much, of course, at my age, um, I lived through the last great war, um, we call it one thing, you call it uh, another. <laughs> but it was uh, a, a, a disastrous war. And we faced the same thing in that in the beginning, I, I'm sure you all know that Britain stood alone. Even America did not support us in the beginning. We had no support from anywhere as Germany overran, um, of course, Poland, Czechoslovakia, then of course France, and then advanced further and attacked Russia. But we never lost faith that we would win the battle because God was with us. We went to prayer. We prayed, as you know, we had seven national days of prayer. And it's that confidence that kept us, kept me as a young boy through those years. And I want to encourage you here in the Ukraine, you will win. There's no question. It, it's, I, nobody can be precise as to how long this will take, but I do believe uh, that a miracle will happen. Because if you remember, I was with you just three or four days before the war started on the 20th of February, uh, 2022. And I, in prayer, I made two strong prayers. The first one was that no Russian soldier would enter Kiev. They didn't. They were very close, but they didn't actually get in, as we know, because last year we celebrated this by holding a day of prayer in Bucha, where they did capture Bucha, but it, they never got any further. And so it is quite significant. And um, I prayed that God would protect Kiev, but I also asked God for another miracle. Because remembering the Bible, in the Bible, Israel, and I find in one sense um, Ukraine a little bit like Israel in the Bible, and I would quote those connections in speaking, probably will later today, but the fact is with Israel that when they were 
fleeing from Egypt and they came to the Red Sea, they were followed by what was the most powerful army then known, the Egyptian army. Through history, different ones. At that time, the Egyptians were the strongest. And when God opened the Red Sea to allow Israel to cross through, God actually used the Red Sea to destroy the Egyptian army. And I believe that God will support you in Ukraine strongly enough that there will come a day when you recognize that God has destroyed the Russian army. Now that's powerful, but I see the illustration in the Bible that God can do it. And if he's done it in the past, my prayer, and I'm joining you in this, is that God will do it again. Because just as the Egyptian army was a threat to more than Israel, um, I see Russia as more than a threat to Ukraine. That if, if in the Ukraine you don't defeat Russia, Russia will expand in other directions. Finland is already afraid. The Baltic states are afraid because you have that little bit in, Russia has that bit in Kaliningrad. And I can see that even Poland is afraid of an attack. So in effect, in Ukraine, you are defending Europe. 